Kings of the Galaxy Volume 2. This is a 2017 film that is directed by, once again, by James Gunn. The plot is, we see after a successful mission, the Guardians have Peter Quill and his right team of misfits go on another request, but it's not till Peter reunites with his long-lost father, Ego, but it's not till they discover that Ego is not who he think he is till they discover the dark truth about him. Now, what do I think of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is... I like this movie. I do. I think it's one of the better sequels from the MCU. Yes, when you look at the first film, the first film is such a big surprise. It's such a great film. It's one of the better films we have. As this one does, why well, is up there as the first film? But I do think it's a really solid good time, and it's still a triumph, and it still has some emotional weight to it. And of course, the characters are still fleshed out as what they are. Will, Chris Pratt, great as always. His character this time around, you see him trying to figure out about his father and why he's discussed about why he's not there to pick him up, why he picked Yondu, and why is Yondu not brought into him. There's a lot of questions around him. But you got to admit, there are some things in there to discover. And of course, talk about ego itself. Ego is played by Kurt Russell, which, funny thing is, him and his son, White Russell, if you don't remember, White Russell plays John Walker, a.k.a. the supposed to be Captain America, but now, at the end of the Falcon Winter Soldier, he becomes US agent, which we all know now, which he will appear again in the Thunderbolts movie next year. Looking forward to that. Hope it's good. But anyway, back to that. That being said, it's good to have a foreign son in the MCU, and who knows? Can we get Goldie Hawn in there and have the Russell family in the group? We need that. Anyway, Ego, he's an interesting villain. I wouldn't say he's my absolute favourite, but Kurt Russell does give a good performance, and you do see him bonding with Peter for a little bit, and of course, you find out the truth that he does kill Peter Quill's mum by putting a tumour on her head and giving her a uh, brain cancer, which, holy shit, Dark times, dark times, much everything that's going on in that film alone. Let's just say that. You see the planet itself, the eyes and the mouth, amazing. Uh, other char new character, we introduce a new team, which is Mantis. I can't pronounce the actress's name, I couldn't recall, but I'll put it right there. The actress who plays Mantis. Mantis, he, she reads people's minds and she does uh, read people's uh, feelings or thoughts and, of course, he reads Peter Quill's thoughts about him having sexual love or sexual crush on Gamora and Drax just literally point out say it should you're just giving out your darkest secrets and say, Oh, you're so embarrassed. <laughs> do me, do me, do me. And of course Mantis touches Drax and she starts laughing along with him with Peter, which is hilarious. It's just so it's so funny, but Drax, quite funny, Drax doesn't get much to do. You know, he's just there as a comedic side point, which I will admit, that's a bit the downside. I wish Drax could have done more about the action. Yes, he does fight that big giant monster at the beginning, but you don't see him much now. He's just there as a comedic standpoint. But he does help out a little bit, but it's a shame that he didn't get much to do besides that. But that being said, I do think he's still enjoyable to watch. Zoe Zeldana as Gamora. You know, her and Peter Quill's relationship start to grow a little bit more, and of course... Even though Gamora's still not interested, but he, he down Meeks does care about Peter. She does, but he doesn't show it yet till more time. And of course, Nebula, played by Karen Gillan, which never has a little bit more to do this time round. Even though she was a side character in with Ronan in the first film, but this time she's got more to do. That she wants to um, defeat Gamora Killer because he wants to make her that she's better than her but even though deep down is that she's just wanted a sister and of course because you know tables are turned and nebula has joined the guardians at the end helping out to defeat ego which we all knew that was going to come rocket and groot rocket and groot rocket played by bradley cooper or voiced by bradley cooper uh rocket has a lot more not much to do he gets taken by prison by the Ravagers, being like Yondu, but yet Yondu gets betrayed by his Ravagers because the Ravagers are getting sick of Yondu's 
uh, I'm getting soft spot for Peter and then Cora's let him go. And of course, he doesn't want to kill Peter, but even though he does, he, does, he teased him, and no, I can do it. I want to kill the Guardians. Even though deep down, he doesn't want to do it. He just wants to play it fairly because he knows he's going to get criminals because he knows he has a soft spot for Peter for the most part for the film. Even though deep down, he does have a great sacrifice at the end. He does save Peter. He does show us that he's not a bad person. He does care about Peter Crow, which is showing hints from the first film. It shows he does care. Baglin does help out, you know, even though he doesn't want to be part of this Ravager, he wants to help Yondu and Royal King Groot to escape so he can get the ship. Especially when Yondu, Rocket, and even Groot, Baby Groot, should I say, fighting these uh, Ravengers and, of course, fighting where the music's playing. And, of course, speaking of, Baby Groot, Vin Diesel's the voice of Baby Groot. He's just adorable. He's just cute because it does seem to be boring because this film takes place a few months after the first film. So it's still in 2014. And, of course, Groot is acting like a baby and of course you see him doing all these weird cute stuff especially when Rocket's telling about this bomb to plant on Eagle's core planet which is kind of weird funny but it's so cute you can't help but oh he's oh, so adorable I love it it's it's just so funny it's just so cute and adorable because Groot is just basically the highlight of this film uh James Gunn's directing is still great it's still worth watching it still has that unique style he's still brought the heart and humor to it and basically he's just so bring it so much energy so much life to it even though it's not not as good as the first but he still brings some original flair to it it still has that colorful yet bright atmosphere to it which is really enjoyable for the most part no more or less the same as that music choices the songs the soundtrack is amazing uh, there's so many great songs. That, 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 it's pretty much better than the first one, if you ask me personally. Like Mr. Blue Sky with the opus, even Baby Groot dancing. It was just so cute. Uh, Surrender, played by Cheat Track, which I love that song. Mommy's alright, Daddy's alright. They just seem a little weird. Surrender, Surrender. Our son song, which still gets me to this day. Even Yonder's Funeral. Still gets me, still tugging me in the heartstrings, which, oh man, talk about tears, talk about tears when you think about it. Okay, guys, sorry, I almost forgot. This is Future Ross here. Uh, in terms of another negative, I will say is listed the Bicky as Elijah chick from the beginning of the film. She's fine, but she's mostly wasted. She's underused. And of course, you do get a tease of Adam Warlock, played by Walt Poulter, is going to be in Guardians 3, which that is something. But at the end, I think this Mickey was kind of wasted a little bit. And of course, you do have Sylvester Stallone as the Ravager for, from the Ravagers team. Yeah, he's cool. It's cool to see him in the MCU. And I hope he does return in Guardians 3. So I hope he does, because I think. First of all, it's a good addition to the MCU cast line, if you know what I mean, in the bigger picture of things. But like I said, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I think it's better for the most part. The action scenes are still great. The characters are still likable for what they were. Um, yes, I will say the first one is still better in comparison, but this one is still a great time. I think it's mostly underrated and very underappreciated. I think many people give this a lot of crap, but I think it's it's good. I think it's a good sequel. I think it's a definitely one of the better sequels compared to like Thor the Dark World or Ant Man and the Wasp. But this one I will say is fine. I would say this one's good. It is good. Such a great film. Um, my rating, I will say it's a good time. It's a good time. The Galaxy Volume 2 is definitely a good time. All right, guys, comment down below. What do you think? Do you love the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's all right? Let me know down in the comments down below. And of course, guys, until next time, see ya!